Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First things first, next week's video will be our monthly Q&A. Please post your questions related to martial art, Xiu Dao, and Chinese culture in the comment section or on the Ask Dao Yi channel in the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. For the past two weeks, we looked at single movements in Xing Yi and Tai Chi. Today, we will do the same for Ba Gua, a unique style requiring a unique approach. But first, let's get high on tea. Today's tea is the Da Yu Ling Wu Long Cha, or simply Da Yu Ling Cha, a wonderful high mountain oolong tea from Taiwan. Da Yu Ling is the name of a mountain range, and the Cha is a tea. This region is very famous for its high-end oolong tea due to its high altitude of about 2,600 meters. The region is home to the world's highest tea plantation. Due to the huge variation in temperatures within each day, tea bushes in this kind of environment grow very slowly, because of which the tea leaves remain tender and increase in sweetness. Normally, tea farmers collect the tea leaves twice a year in this region. The tea leaves collected in the later fall are especially suitable to produce Da Yuling tea, which is very unique since tea leaves picked in springtime are normally better than those in the fall season, while it's the opposite for Da Yuling Wulong tea. So, the wonderful flavor of Wulong tea produced in this region is contributed to the high altitude. Da Yuling Wulong is lightly fermented or oxidized, which is considered light fragrance Wulong. So, this tea has both the flavor of green tea and a strong fragrance of Wulong. Its wonderful aromatic characteristics impart Da Yulong Wulong tea a distinctive and marvelous flavor, including orchid, mint, rose, uh, chestnut, and so on. That's why Da Yuling Wulong is ranked as the top Wulong in Taiwan. Da Yuling Wulong is produced in very small quantities making it very expensive. Very often, people produce Wulong using the Da Yuling tea processing method, but with tea leaves from other surrounding regions, even from Vietnam. There's nothing wrong with the tea produced in Vietnam, just that it should not be sold under the Da Yuling name. Buyer be aware. Da Yuling Wulong provides the same health benefits as the other Wulong teas, but as with many other teas, people drink Da Yuling for its flavor. Da Yuling Wulong is best brewed with water at 100 degrees Celsius for 20 to 40 seconds for the first brew in order to extract its flavor. In other words, to awaken the tea leaves. Then add 10 seconds for every subsequent brew up to a minute of brewing time. Normally, a good quality Da Yuling Wulong can be brewed more than 10 times. I have a box of Da Yuling Wulong, which I only drink with friends since it is expensive and wonderful high mountain oolong tea. Sharing great tea with friend makes for an even better tea drinking experience. This is the Da Yuling tea leaf, a strong leaf with a nice color. Check out the bright yellow of the tea decoction. 
It's got a nice strong flavor too. Again, no amount of words would do justice to an amazing tea. You have to try it out yourself. Da Yuling is a great choice if you want to appreciate a high quality high mountain oolong tea from Taiwan. I guarantee you will not regret drinking this tea. The expense is worth the experience. Do let me know your experience with the Da Yuling Oolong in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, single movement practice in Bagua. Topics covered in today's video include First, unique characteristics of a Bagua practice. Second, why single movement practice is key. Third, traditional approach to single movement practice. Fourth, practice of a Bagua single movements. Fifth, principle of a Bagua single movements practice. Sixth, misperception of a Bagua practice. Seventh, demonstration and 8 takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. Unique Characteristics of a Bagua Practice Bagua, the youngest of the three internal styles of a martial art, is hard to master due to the unique characteristics of its training method, which I have mentioned in many prior videos. One of those unique characteristics and also a key principle of a Bagua practice is constant circular walking, not only in practice but also in self-defense situations if we compare Bagua practice to other styles. On one hand, this is quite an advantage of a Bagua in terms of the application of techniques as the constant changing of one's position and techniques, which are so important to combat situations, is built into the practice. On the other hand, constant walking, especially if a practitioner uses only this training method, can actually have some major disadvantages. More specifically, it is hard for a Bagua practitioner to generate sufficient martial power for use in self-defense. Any martial art has its advantages and also quote-unquote disadvantages. In any martial art training, we should not only develop our martial skills based on the advantages, but more importantly, we should also negate the quote-unquote disadvantages that could otherwise potentially hinder the progress offered by the practice. So, understanding these disadvantages and negating their possible hindrance to one's Bagua practice is a key for a practitioner to reach an advanced level. To summarize, Bagua practice provides both advantages and disadvantages in developing martial skills used in combat and self-defense situations. This is caused by its unique constant circular walking approach, which is based on the concept of constant change, a concept from Yi Jing or the Book of Changes. By the way, if you are new to Bagua, I have many Bagua videos talking about Bagua practice, such as Internal Style Concept 35, Yi Jing, The Book of Changes, and Bagua Zhang. Link is in the description. In this video, I will introduce the single movement practice in Bagua, which will help you overcome the quote unquote disadvantages of a Bagua practice. First, let's talk about why single movement practice is the key solution which brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Why single movement practice is key. Before answering this question, let's review what a single movement is. In the previous two videos, I mentioned that 
a single movement is the building block of forms and routines in martial art training. Even a single movement in the traditional styles has a specific martial function. Historically, the single movement practice came into being much earlier than forms and routines. Especially on the ancient martial battlefield, soldiers were mainly trained in single movements using both weapons and bare hands to ensure readiness to fight in other situations. With the further development of martial art practice over time, especially over the last 400 years, routines became longer and longer, indicating the development of Chinese martial art practice in terms of routines. Also, recall the term Chai Shou, which means a martial art practice process in which a teacher breaks down a form into different single movements in order to practice their martial functions. With time, Chai Shou became a very important part of any martial art practice intended for combat and self-defense situations. So, teachers use the Chai Shou process to train students in martial skills and to make them understand the martial applications of each movement, making it a critical step in traditional training. As mentioned in the previous section, Ba Gua, the youngest of the three internal styles of martial arts, applies constant walking as its main training approach, which makes it very hard to generate martial power in a fighting situation. As a result, a style that was originally created for combat purposes developed on average into a style mainly for martial demonstration purposes, which is a very unfortunate situation. Even worse, the contemporary Wushu Bagua performance has made that style a performance art. All of these phenomena were actually partially caused by neglecting single movement practice. Any martial art without martial power and martial techniques will eventually become performance art, which should be avoided by all of us. Yes, as with many other styles of Chinese martial art, Ba Gua should also focus on developing flexibility and fluidity, not only in practice but also in application. However, flexibility and fluidity should be based on its martial intent and martial function, or flexibility and fluidity would, unfortunately, be useless. Also, flexibility and fluidity that cannot be applied in a self-defense situation are useless in terms of martial function, and no traditional martial artist wants to see it. I have discussed the importance of single movement practice in the last two videos. Please have a look to get a better understanding. Links are in the description. Then, what is the traditional approach to Bagua single movement practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Traditional approach to single movement practice. Even though Bagua is a younger style in the Chinese martial art community, it has undergone continuous development, especially in the last 100 years. Different Bagua branches have been continually developing the style. At the same time, many traditional practices have been neglected by many practitioners for various reasons. So, researching, analyzing, and organizing Bagua content is now more important than ever. I recommend checking out my prior video titled Bagua Zhang, 
building blocks, requirements, and expectations. Link is in the description. In that video, I have introduced a framework of Bagua content. Without a clear understanding of a typical Bagua practice curriculum, it is almost impossible to reach an advanced level. So, I highly recommend checking out that video. Traditionally, there are many specific practices aimed at developing Bagua martial power and martial techniques. For example, single movements and linear movement practice are very suitable for this purpose. We all know that Bagua practice is a circular stepping based style. That is, main practice applies different types of circular walking patterns. Many Bagua branches also have a linear stepping practice, which is actually aimed at developing martial power and martial techniques. For example, Cheng style Gao form, the branch created by Gao Yisheng in Tianjin, contains the sixfold Hou Tian palms in order to practice both martial power and self-defense techniques. This makes the style a very effective and efficient training system indicating the concept of focusing on developing necessary Bagua martial skills with street walking as its main stepping pattern. So, a linear stepping pattern in Bagua practice, at a certain point, is a way to accelerate the progress in a more specific way which can at least improve the effectiveness and efficiency of Bagua training. This is an example of the traditional approach to training essential Bagua skills. Even though it is not as effective as a single movement training, at least it aims in the same direction compared to the conventional method. Of course, there are many specific single movements in any well-developed Bagua branch. Speaking from observation and experience, all of the branches of Bagua emphasize single movements in the old days. For example, the Cheng style of Bagua taught by Cheng Youlong and the Zhang Zhaodong style of Bagua both have well-developed single movement practice which is a must for all serious Bagua practitioners of those styles. To summarize, single movement practice and linear stepping patterns aim at developing both martial power and martial techniques for combat and self-defense. Single movements, unfortunately very widely neglected by many Bagua practitioners nowadays should especially be emphasized in training, which is the motivation for today's video. Now, let's look at how one should practice the Bagua single movements, the most important practice of all Bagua branches in the next topic. Topic 4. Practice of Bagua single movements As stated in the last two videos, I categorize all the single movements of a Bagua practice into three types, the same as those for Xing Yi and Tai Chi. They are first, flexibility and body conditioning training, second, martial power training, and third, martial technique training. I did now like to elaborate on them one by one. First category, flexibility and body conditioning training. There are many single movements traditionally used for body conditioning training, even though this part is commonly neglected by many Bagua practitioners. Many serious Bagua practitioners still understand the importance of this part and emphasize it in training. By nature, Bagua requires a higher level of flexibility especially so in Cheng style Bagua, since 
that style has many low posture practices. One thing worth pointing out in Bagua teachers often reduce or stop lower posture practice in their senior years to adapt to physical challenges caused by aging. However, if you are in your younger years, I still recommend you try to lower your stance when practicing Bagua. This will be especially beneficial in your senior years not only in terms of martial skill development, but also for maintaining good physical health. So, many Bagua single movement practices in this category are done in a lower posture. If you work on it, make sure to take a step-by-step -step approach to avoid any unnecessary injury. Furthermore, you can also practice flexibility and body conditioning when working on Bagua circle walking. In other words, Bagua flexibility training can be adapted to Bagua circle walking, which also reflects the concept of constant changing, one of the Bagua practice principles. But you have to keep in mind that Bagua circle walking is mainly aimed at developing the whole body structure. It's not designed with flexibility training in mind. That's why I recommend first working on specific movements to improve flexibility and adapting them into Bagua circle walking later. That should be your practice sequence, not the other way around. Second category, martial power training. This includes training such as Fa Jin exercises. Any martial art force without integration with speed will not be effective in application and Bagua power training is no exception. The same principles introduced in Xing Yi and Tai Chi single movement training for developing martial power are largely also applicable to Bagua. As mentioned in the first topics of this video, one very obvious challenge with the Bagua style is that it is hard to develop Bagua power due to its unique body structure. The approach of the forward stepping but toward the center of the circle makes Bagua martial power training a lot harder to achieve compared to many other styles, which is considered a disadvantage of this style. Single movement Fa Jin training is very effective in overcoming this disadvantage. Bagua power training can become much easier with a slightly more extended body structure compared to a standard and natural body structure. Traditionally, there are many single movements aimed at developing a strong Bagua Fa Jin. Bear in mind, Bagua Fa Jin should possess Bagua characteristics, circular and flexible yet powerful. In the old days, Bagua practitioners expressed the Bagua power release based on those criteria and there's absolutely no reason for all of us to stray away from those criteria. Not now, not in the future. Third category, martial technique training. Again, Bagua, like any other martial art style, will be reduced to just another performance art without the practice of martial power and martial techniques especially martial techniques. To practice martial techniques, Chai Shou, a term mentioned in the past two videos as well as this one, is a good solution. However, to make this more effective, a practitioner can start to work on Bagua, Ba Neng, or the 8 ability practice of Bagua. About 8 ability of Bagua, Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 57, 8 Ability Practice of Bagua. 
Link is in the description. These eight abilities can be the first type and then you can move on to other specific techniques that are derived from these practices. It is worth noting that the most effective and efficient way to practice this category of movements is with the training partner. A training partner can really accelerate your training progress or else you will need a lot more solo practice. Traditionally, <coughs> Bagua also has its own push hands practice, which is similar to the two person form of Xing Yi but practiced in a circular stepping pattern. As is the case with the push hand in Tai Chi, push hand in Bagua is also used to practice energy sensing and understanding Bagua techniques, and another substitute for pressure testing which includes applying specific movements with speed and power, especially in two-person format. To summarize, a Bagua practitioner has to choose the right movements for developing specific skills. Now, let's take a look at some important principles of a Bagua single movement practice in the next topic. Topic 5 Principles of a Bagua Movement Practice In the last two videos, I mentioned a proverb that I created to emphasize some key principles of uh, the three categories of a single movement practice for Xing Yi and Tai Chi. This proverb can be applied to Bagua practice as well. Again, the proverb is Chen Jin Bagu Yao Man Lian, Lian Xi Fa Li Yao Kuai Lian, Gong Fang Ji Shu Yao Jing Run. Translation Slow movement training for flexibility and body conditioning. Fast movement training for martial power. Clean and precise movement training for martial technique. End translation. I recommend you watch the principles section of the previous two videos on single movements in Xing Yi and Tai Chi. Links are in the description. For Bagua, I'd like to mention a new principle, also my own creation. This principle is applicable to any and all branches of Bagua. It is 接手再烧,发力再跟, or reach the opponent with the end of the hand but send the power from the root. It may sound like an overall principle of a Bagua application, but actually, it is more suited for single movement practice. Unless you proactively practice Bagua movements according to this principle, it is impossible to apply it in a demonstration or application. Let me explain it in detail. We all know that Bagua application is based on palm strikes. Of course, most palm strikes can also be replaced with a fist. Since Bagua is a palm-based style, so changing palm to fist is considered a derived practice. Movements involving palms are very flexible, meaning that the palms can reach different areas of an opponent's body more effectively than a fist. For example, to block an incoming attack, palms can be in different shapes and suitable palm shapes can be applied more effectively compared to a fist. We also know that to block an incoming attack, speed is more important than applied strength. So, to reach the opponent's incoming attack, let's say a fist, power should be concentrated on the palm instead of other body areas, or else the speed would not be high enough. That is the explanation of the first part of this proverb, 接手再烧, reach the opponent with the end of the hand. However, when reaching the opponent's body part, for example, the arm, power from the shoulders 
or even lower body part should be sent to the attacking palm. Doing so will amplify the power released. This is the explanation of the second part of this proverb, Fa Li Zai Gen, or sending the power from the root. The key aspect here is that in order to be able to transmit power from the root, for example, the shoulder, to the end, for example, the palm, a wave-like power transmission should be immediately executed without any blockage. To reach this level, single movement practice in all the three categories is critical. That's why a specific goal requires specific practice, and you need to break down the final goal into practices of different categories of movements to get there. I will introduce more principles related to this practice in the future. Now, let's move on to the next topic where we will debunk a common misperception. Topic 6. Misperception of a Bagua Practice Bagua is a walking-based style. A very famous Bagua proverb says, quote, Bagua zhang, zou wei xian. Translation, to Bagua practice, walking is the first step. Some people believe that since walking is the first and the most important step and the practice of this style, as long as one practices walking, all Bagua skills will be achieved automatically. Let's debunk this misperception today. Yes, Bagua is a walking based style, but walking is its basic practice and not the be all and end all. Any style of martial art, especially the internal styles, has many levels of practice, which I have mentioned explained in the Bagua Building Block video. So, only practicing walking and neglecting other training such as power release, flexibility, martial techniques, and so on, will leave you with only a basic level of practice. It's like stopping the construction of a building at the foundation stage. Furthermore, specific training is necessary to be able to apply Bagua in a self-defense situation. Any specific training should be broken down into specific practices and practiced specifically. This is the traditional way for Bagua training. Does anyone honestly believe that walking alone will get them the Bagua self-defense skills? Only working on Bagua basic walking without the training for flexibility and the body conditioning, martial power, and martial techniques will render it ineffective for all purposes except a walking performance art. It is worth noting that Bagua's single movement experience for flexibility and body conditioning training may involve a few movements, but only one of them is the main movement, which is the single movement. So, very often, Bagua movements in the first category may involve a series of single movements in order to train the main movement. Now, let me demonstrate a Bagua single movement exercise in the next topic. Topic 7 Demonstration. Today, I'd like to introduce an Bagua single exercise for practicing flexibility. The name of this movement is Wu Long Jiao Zhu, or Black Dragon Coiling Around the Pillar. Okay, start from uh, this posture, then extend, then back. Again. So, bend the back. Then extend the arm, then extend the other arm, then move by. Topic 8 Takeaways First, unique characteristics of a Bagua practice. Based on the Yi Jing concept, Bagua applies constant walking as its stepping pattern, which creates both 
advantages and disadvantages for this style in terms of training process for any practitioner. We need a solution to overcome the disadvantages caused by the unique characteristics of this style. Second, why single movement practice is key. Single movement practice is especially important to a Bagua practitioner due to the fact that it can help master flexibility, martial power, and martial techniques in a quick manner. Third, traditional approach to single movement practice. Linear stepping and single movement practice have been used in the traditional Bagua training even though it has been neglected by many people nowadays. Still, a well-developed Bagua training system should have already had it as the main training content. Fourth, practice of Bagua single movements. Bagua single movements are also divided into three categories, flexibility and body conditioning, martial power training, and martial technique training. Fifth, principle of a Bagua single movement practice. The proverb Chen Jin Ba Gu Yao Man Lian, Lian Xi Fa Li Yao Kuai Lian, Gong Fang Ji Shu Yao Jing Ren, mentioned in the last two videos for Xing Yi and Tai Chi, is also applicable to Bagua practice. Sixth, another important principle for Bagua single movement practice is Jie Shou Zai Shao, Fa Li Zai Gen, O. Oh, reach the opponent with the end of the hand but send the power from the root. Seventh, a very common misperception of a Bagua practice is that, since walking is the first and the most important step and the practice of this style, as long as one practice walking, all Bagua skills will be achieved automatically. Remember, this is a misperception. Walking is only a basic step of a Bagua practice, not the be all and end all. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get a better idea of a Bagua single movement practice. That concludes today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions for next week's monthly Q&A. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.